Hellos and welcome to Middle Earth Talk Radio. I'm your host, Hawk, and through the wonders of the internet and the miscellaneous, almost wonders of Google+, Plus, broadcasting to you live from Spokane, Washington, and on the other end, we have Michael Martinez over in California. Say hello there, Michael. Hello there, Michael. And Hawk. So, you know, I uh, never say hello yes. there, Hawk. So I'm I know, because you keep doing the George Burns joke. <laughs> he was an so, almost funny man. <laughs> almost, huh? He was definitely low-key. Yes, so I was going to tell you, this is the last week that you will see me broadcasting from MMDI Studios in California. Oh, really? Yes. Are you moving again? Um, yes, going on the road, taking an extended vacation. Mm -hmm. Long deserved, well earned. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy. When we're off the air, fill me in a little. Okay. Uh, so, uh, from our last show, a couple weeks back, three weeks back, uh, we had a posting in the irc.com RIP chat room from Artemir, who is currently tuned in. I think they're the fellows from Finland. And uh, he wanted us at some point when we could maybe talk about it. We've talked about it a little bit before, but he offered his own opinions as well. Regarding, he was uh, thinking for quite a long time about the divisions in the Tolkien community. The matter of uh, Tolkien being split into several subcategories, such as Tolkien's authorship from a literature point of view, the linguistical aspect, the biography as in Tolkien the man, Collect, collecting and bibliography, story, internal matter, and discussion, the movies, other adaptations, illustrations, music, etc. Uh, he says that some Tolkien quote scholars end quote are not much into any story internal debates, and he thinks they could learn something from them because he thinks that all the subcategories basically are linked to each other in some degree. But this is not always considered that much, and also the communication within the community is not the best, it seems. There are several Tolkien discussion forums, and discussions are repeated. People at one discussion forum could learn something from looking at other forums. For example, uh, he mentions John Ratliff recently heard about an article about an Icelandic au pair who worked in Tolkien's household. This piece of news was spread a bit around in the Tolkien community already a few years ago. Sometimes Artemir thinks that it would be best if there were on, was only one Tolkien discussion forum of some sort. Uh, he'd also like to mention that in the latest issue of Amon Hen, someone wondered why all the great debates have disappeared, referring, and you'll love this, Michael, referring to the Balrog Wings debate and <laughs> other story internal issues. <laughs> but personally, he thinks that does not concern only these great debates. Um, such as Balrog Wings, Tom Bobadil, etc., but story internal discussion and studies in general. He thinks this comes and goes and waves from forum to forum, but on the whole, he thinks this has been in decline in recent years. Uh, Artemir also thinks that many people who are very knowledgeable about Tolkien lore have disappeared, so basically a sort of meta discussion about the matter of Tolkien in this community would be interesting. Uh, he also says that Tolkien gaming and role-playing gaming is another sub subcategory. Return of the Ring, uh, oh, Hallian mentions, because they were there last week, uh, Return of the Ring, that's the biggest Tolkien-related event since Tolkien 2005, uh, Hallian said, and he said probably the biggest ever, surely deserves a mention on the show, which, which has already happened. Um, they, they posted this before they went. And they were there, and it sounds like they had a good time. Maybe they'll fill us in a little bit in the chat room about that. So that was uh, quite a bit. Uh, and info on that convention was returnofthering.org. So that's one large topic of discussion there that Artemir put out. And then a little bit about Return of the Ring. Maybe Howdy can fill us in in the chat room and I can relay for him. And then I also have an interesting little article from the latest issue of Wired that actually is Tolkien related, but it's not on the cover. It's just a small and, and article inside. They didn't send someone out to interview me this time. Bummer. It's regarding Shire Statistician. So, 
Oh, we'll cover that in a little while. Yes, uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. It's a very short article. It's just a half page, but it's actually pretty interesting. Well, I want so, to go into it now. Okay, you want to do that now? We can do that now. He will stop at nothing to quantify Middle Earth with one family tree to rule them all. Oh, it's, wait a minute. Is this about that guy that did the... the, the population Oh, my charts? God. Oh. Yeah, you mentioned this some time ago, but I'll, why I just now put it in. Oh, in Emil Johansson is a Swedish chemical engineering student who moonlights as a genealogist of men, elves, hobbits, and dwarves. Uh, uh, creator of the Lord of the Rings project, Johansson is on a quest to track every character from Tolkien's fictional world. He started by creating a massive family tree, and from there he crafted an interactive map of Middle Earth. Now I'm wondering, is he doing the Emmy Dem project? Because I used to the, the Emmy Dem project used to be hosted on Merck.com, then moved from there at some point. Oh. I'm not sure if it's in fellow or not. But anyway, they talk about an interactive map and timeline of events and Tolkien stories. He's even performed statistical analysis on the character's race, lifespan, and gender. Johansson points out that the lopsided gender split, 81% male, 19% female, reflects the world Tolkien included in his tales of the ultimate war, but probably not Middle Earth in its entirety. Since the LOTRproject.com launched in January, Johansson has received hundreds of emails applauding his effort while also pointing out missing dwarfs and other errors. Notice they spell dwarfs rather than dwarves in this article. Yes, why are you boring me with this stuff? <laughs> Well, you, you're not the only person here, you know. It's, this uh, is the most unimpressive. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute here, wait a minute here. Well, you don't need to read the article, okay? I, the, the, I've done the, the family I tree one thing. sentence left, okay. But, but I've but done also the three population three. density. I don't care. I've done the population estimates, too, okay? I've done okay. this, been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. So what if he's got pretty charts? His numbers are as bogus as any. Will you get that out of my face, please? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm not interested really? in this boring stuff. Well, you're, you're I thought you had you something wanted, interesting. You said you wanted to hear it right now. And when I said that was good enough, you should have. I, I know, I know. But isn't it interesting that that made it to Wired? No, I mean everything makes it to Wired eventually. I was well, in. Well, I haven't seen. I haven't seen ten years ago. I didn't know that. You did too know that. I, I posted did. to you. I. Oh, I, I, right. I you so. No, you didn't. Not me. <laughs> no. A copy of the magazine? No. Oh Lord. <laughs> I don't believe you. I'm going to show okay. you the cover. I'm going to show you the cover. Please do. You do the share mode, screen share. Why do we have to do that? Oh, okay. You just send me a link. There you go. There's a link. Okay. They interviewed everybody in that one. So this was during the Peter Jackson peak back then. Yeah, 10 years ago, man. Right. All right, I'll include that. Whoa. I did all That's the genealogies. I did all the population. So I've done it twice. Okay. Is it, is it in your... What? Yeah, is it in your... Um, it's everywhere, man. Visualizing Middle Earth or understanding Middle Earth in one of those? or What, the genealogies? Right, right. And I don't remember seeing that neither. Hello? The final Eldaran genealogy. I did that in the nineties. Okay. Cool. Well, just like you know, just like sure. Artemir, this is this is like a waste of my time. Okay. But, and he's. I'm not the first person to do the the genealogies. I mean, gee whiz. Here's do you know one version. Here's one version of it. Okay. No, I don't think there's a table in there. But I don't. Know. It's been a while since I... Oh, there are tables. Yeah, I did tables. They're not as funky and fancy. So, <clears throat> I mean, I've done plenty of genealogy things. Right. Whoopee, big deal. 
Other people have done it. I mean, my God, you can go to Wikipedia and find you. Okay, well, yeah. this is the latest. This is the latest wave with the Hobbit movies. You know, like in a rehash. This is people being so desperate to find something to talk about that they'll talk about anything. Okay, this is that's how okay. it is. Because everybody's tired of these, you know, Peter Jackson blows his nose headlines. Right. Now let's go. <laughs> let's go back to Artemir's. Right. Well, this thing. kind of this fits into Artemir's discussion a little bit too. I think. It has nothing to do with Artemir's discussion. Sure I don't, does. I don't want to waste my time on that waste of time. Okay. We're done with the stupid genealogy thing. So. Ooh. Don't um, mince words, Michael. Tell me what you really think. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I have looked at Tolkien genealogy websites for over a decade. I don't care if this guy put fancy charts on his site. He's not doing anything new, okay? Okay. Right. So it's not news to me. It's uninteresting. Now let's move on, please. Okay. Go ahead. Let's discuss Artemir stuff. I mean, the Encyclopedia of Arda was doing this in the 90s, you know? The old online Tolkien electronic encyclopedia project or whatever it was. ETEP was doing stuff like I mean, this is old, old, old stuff. So Artemir wants to know why the Tolkien community can't get along. It's because they're all a bunch of freaking egos, man. They're not humble like me. You're supposed to laugh at that. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that some of the Tolkien scholars probably don't read the story before they start commenting on it. Right, right. I think the majority of them, maybe 95%, have read that book more often than, say, the common fan does. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so maybe I shouldn't call the other 5% Tolkien scholars. And that's, not, that's, that's kind of an insult to the Tolkien scholars, and that's not what I intend to say. I mean, I think they know the story. I think they love the story. I think they, they get into, you know, like the... the the details of the world when they're reading the story, but that's not what their professional interests are. And they're trying to line the story up with their professional interests. So, mm -hmm. so they're, what we're seeing with the vast majority of the Tolkien scholars is they're, they're taking something they love and applying it to something else they love. And you're only going to see part of it. You know, I am probably the leading in-story uh, analyst. I'm not the only one. I mean, the, gosh, I forget who it was. The guy that did the green books at uh, thewondering.net. The, it was a question and answer column. I don't think they're still doing it, but it ran for years. People would write in and they'd ask him questions and he'd all sorts of you know neat stuff that uh, um, he, would, he would share. So he was, uh, I would say, an in-story scholar analyst you know like me uh very good very knowledgeable um and and you know there are other people um uh, we'll take the encyclopedia of Arda. i don't know how many people are doing that i believe it started out as one guy um right. and although i i criticized some of his entries through the years i mean that was an extensive body of work still is it's, yeah you know, it's a lot of recently, work recently redesigned too i believe uh, so there's another person that is very knowledgeable in story. And of course, these guys are not getting published in the the academic journals, okay? Which I guess you know Artemir is going. Well, why aren't the academic journals that publish Tolkien-related criticism publishing the in story stuff? Well, there's really no room in literary criticism for documenting story internal specifics. It's not what criticism is about. Um, Robert Foster is probably the most well-known in-story specialist scholar, okay, because he wrote the Guide to Middle-earth and, the, and then the Complete Guide to Middle-earth. So I'm not aware of uh, any body of Tolkien criticism that really has much to say about his work. Mm. Which, okay. I mean, there, he's probably the most widely read uh, in-story scholar after Wayne Hammond and Christina Skull, because, I mean, they came out with the two companion books to the Lord okay. of the Rings. Uh, 
So, Hammond and Skull do get cited a fair amount, but um, they're not really, their in-story scholarship is a blend of, of uh, natural criticism or ordinary criticism where uh, they'll, they'll try to explain in their annotations, you know, possible sources or meanings or relevance and, you know, things like that. They'll try to provide a context for the reader. They're not trying to document the world internally the way Robert Foster did. And, and of course, there is a, a very powerful argument to be made uh, for the fact that, or for the, the position that the Complete Guide to Middle Earth is the definitive work on what could essentially be considered the, the canonical or near canonical works. You know, the, the Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, The Road Goes Ever On, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, and The Silmarillion, uh, which the, the Silmarillion is the only posthumous book that Foster covered. He also included a few comments from some Tolkien fan scenes and things like that. But nobody has ever come out with a book that documents all that other stuff and unfinished tales and mm. twelve volumes of the history of Middle Earth and the two volumes of the history of the Hobbit. Uh, and I don't think that such a book would be well received because too many people would be arguing over whether the stuff should be included or not. Uh, so I, I think it has to. I think that kind of scholarship has to end with Foster's work, even though we can all look at it and go, "Well, you know, we know a little bit more about this point here. We know a little bit more about that point there." Um, it's just never going to really grow beyond that. It's just just so archaic at that point, is what you're saying. I don't know about archaic. Uh, it, it's or, or, or argumentative. Or sub specialized, or you just think it's too combative, huh? Yeah, it's too combative. The, too okay. many too many opinions, you know. Uh, and as for why there are no more great debates, uh, well, I think everybody's gotten older. More yeah. people <laughs> moved on. Um, I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm kind of burned out on Balrog Wings. You know, people are just going to distort that uh, it, for whatever reason, and I'm tired of correcting. My, you know, people. You know, who mis misquote me or quote me from some early version of, of the debates. You know, my points of view right. on on that subject have changed over the years too, and sure. I've I've tried to clarify that. Uh, probably haven't done a very good job, but because people still think I'm, you know, I think there's like some sort of big flappy wings on the, the Balrog or something. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just one of those things where you get kind of burned out on it. Uh, and once other people have seen why, you know, where all the arguments go, they sort of, I think they feel like that uh, the ground has been covered, why cover it again? Right. Artemir states he thinks that the, the wikis kind of fill that role that you were mentioning. They, they document the Silmarillion unfinished tales and uh, allow that flexibility. I don't know. I, I look at the wikis every week you know, for, to do research for my, uh, my okay. articles. Okay. Uh, because, you know, they, they organize the information very well in some cases. In some cases, <laughs> yeah. it's just a stub, you know. It's like, yeah. okay, I yeah. know more than this stub. Yeah. But, <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't think that the wikis really solve the problem. Okay. They... What are you doing, man? You squeaking like a mouse. Moving stuff. Sorry. Okay. Mine works. Mine works. Yeah. <laughs> you mock me. I do. I do. At any rate, I don't think that, yeah, I, I think the wikis partially fulfill that desire for in-world documentation, but I don't mm -hmm. think they really go that far. Uh, because, first of all, uh, at least one of them, and I won't say which one, is very commercially motivated. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one is, uh, well, there's Wikipedia, which is just an absolute disaster. Um, and then there's... Uh, there are two fan-run wikis that I think are fairly good, uh, but... Which ones? Well, if I tell you which ones I think are fairly good, that'll tell you which one is the commercial one. <laughs> well, Artemir, Artemir thinks that the Encyclopedia of Arda has been surpassed by the wikis now. I'm not sure. Well, you know, he's probably right to a certain extent, because the Encyclopedia of Arda for a long time was just one person's... Uh, 
Right. I had the impression it was just one guy. And I can't like his that. name. So um, everybody gets, you know, to the point that well look at me, I stopped writing about Tolkien for years. <clears throat> I've only got about three hundred question and answer articles on the Middle Earth site. Um, and you know, I've plugged away at that thing for over a year every week. Mm. So uh, it's very hard. <laughs> Time consuming to do all this stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, so I, I can see how the wikis would surpass any individual effort by, you know, by miles. Um, there, are, there are hundreds of questions you could probably find answers to in the wikis that you're not going to find answers to on my sites. A lot of the questions, um, well, there's, a, there's another commercial site, Answers, well, there's two of them, Answers.com and Yahoo Answers. Uh, or you see what most people would probably consider very uh, unnecessary questions. There, are, a lot of them are obviously homework questions. Uh, I think some of them are trolling questions, <laughs> and you know. So those are the kinds of questions I don't want to answer. I mean, I'm not going to do people's homework for them, and I'm certainly not going to respond to the trolls. Uh, and, and some of them are first-time reader questions that you could sit there and try to answer them, but everybody's going to ignore you because they're all swept up in the 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 new experience and all you're going to do is just rain on their parade uh, which I used to do quite a bit <laughs> and right. I don't want to do that anymore um, I once I realized I was spoiling people's joy in the story I decided to stop doing that <laughs> it was never my intention to ruin the story for anybody right um, uh, Artemis says that, uh, yeah, he knows that the wikis have their own disadvantages. Uh, also, this just a little earlier about uh, when he's talking about scholars that are a good example of in-story. He thinks John Ratliff is a good example of an in-story scholar. Well, um, hmm. I don't know. I've read a fair amount of John's work. <laughs> well, and you, and you went and discussed with him back at Tolkien Moot. Uh, yeah, four. I I mean John's knowledge in story is as good as anybody's, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I wouldn't consider much of his work to be really in story scholarship. I'm not okay. sure what Artemir has in mind. Okay, maybe Artemir can clarify on that since he's listening. <laughs> he didn't even yeah. think about answers. That, yeah, I see he's in the the Google Plus chat. So I guess he's multi-chatting. Yes, you heard that word uh, right he's here. Not, he's, yeah, oh, he's not you're, actually you're in copy. Google+. Oh, that's I'm coming from, yeah, from the line. chat room. All right, so Artemir yeah, is not multi the, uh, You're uh, the uh, only multi-chatter in the Tolkien community. Yeah. Yep, I'm, I'm on the wondering.net chat room. I'm on uh, MoopChat and IRC.moop.com, and I'm in the Geek and Sundry uh, uh, IRC as well, as well as here in Google+. Plus. So. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know that I need to elaborate any more on my elaboration. It was quite elaborate. <laughs> okay. Artemis <laughs> says he doesn't think that Answers.com need to be mentioned. He didn't even think about that one. <laughs> That's not the commercial wiki site. Uh, it, it, Loader.wikia.com, okay? To me, that is nothing but total spam there for the advertising only. That's just okay. my opinion. <laughs> I, I believe it is a volunteer-fed website, but it's pretty much about the money as far as I can see. Uh, so, uh, Tolkien Gateway is uh, one of the wikis that, that I think is pretty well done, and uh, the other one's escaping. Well, that's how, yeah, Tolkien Gateway is, uh, yeah, Tolkien Gateway is how, and I used to, I hosted uh, the IRC for him for years, and for a while, I hosted some of the site stuff to finally get some of his own stuff going. Um, and then he kind of went off on working on a computer science degree and a full-time job and kind of kind of fizzled away and I haven't seen it updated in a while. I don't know if it's still being updated. Oh, I think it, I think it is being updated. Okay. I mean, the, and the, that's the a green, whole community. That's just not one person as I understand. Yeah, well, but it was initially Hallian and then, yeah, he got other people to help find stuff out. But for the first year or so, it was almost exclusively Hallian just every day cranking out 20 or more pages of content just mm. every day. Cracking I, I find some pretty esoteric stuff at uh, Tolkien Gateway. Um, dang it, I can't remember the other one. Hold on, let me look up the other one, because it's not fair. 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tolkien. Uh, uh, oh, the Tolkienwiki.org. I uh, sometimes look at uh, that. Okay. Artemis says that Ratliff wrote a lot of essays about story and internal matters for the history of The Hobbit. I've read the history of The Hobbit many times, and I think he and I are just interpreting it, the expression story internal. Uh, story internal differently. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I see that. Um, what, would be, what would be your interpretation of story internal? Well, if you're going to write about history in Middle Earth, I don't know. Uh, because now that I can think of some of my essays. Well, the history of the last alliance of elves and men. So I wrote that essay in the 90s. And it was originally going to be published in the journal Arda. And then they stopped publishing. It, it had been accepted. And Anders was editing it. And they just never published another volume. <laughs> so uh, as best I can recall, that is completely story internal. There's no commentary about it outside works, possible sources, comparative events in real history or anything like that. To me, that's pure story internal commentary. Okay. Most of my work probably doesn't fall into that. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can think of plenty of examples of my essays where I did go outside the story and I said, well, you know, Alexander the Great or you know, in the Middle yeah. Ages or, or whatever. So um, probably I'm being a little bit hard on Artemir and John I mean, the, the, well, maybe not hard, but just making a, a, a distinction. I I don't know. I'm I'm having to think about it off the top of my head, so I reserve the right to change my mind to revise. Okay. <laughs> there probably is not that much story, pure story, internal commentary out there. Now that I think about it. Mm. Right, and that, that's what he was commenting on, is there seemed to be a dearth of that. Chris Seaman probably has done more than me. <laughs> you know. Chris, Chris Seaman, is that what you said? You broke yeah, up Yeah, he's probably published more pure story internal commentary than me. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of, a lot of the role-playing game writers take the time because they're looking for those threads to spin off new stories based on the, the story ideas in there, so yeah, certainly. Uh, I, I can see how yeah, gaming commentary probably is more story pure and, pure story internal than criticism commentary. You know what I write is not really uh, literary criticism. I mean, I've written a little bit of literary criticism, but very yes. little. No, yes, it's much yes. more about the topics. Well, it's more about it's more about the world of Middle Earth itself. Right, and you can sometimes illuminate. Well, okay, I guess you can often illuminate your perception of that world by comparing it to other worlds. You know, think think of how we're we're looking for life on other planets. We're comparing the what we find out about other planets to what we know about life on Earth. So, right. studying <clears throat> studying anything like that, you're going to bring in outside sources. Uh, you, for illumination. It, it's funny, you went to talking about your own essays and at the same time Artemis said, okay, so he said, yeah, well, I know that Ratliff goes outside the story and history of The Hobbit, but he touches on a lot of story and troll matters. And then just as you started to talk about your essays and the story and troll, Artemis says a prime example of story and troll commentary would be Michael's own essays. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was nicely timed. <laughs> so, yeah, I... I you know, I, John does talk a great deal about how the stories progress. Right. And he does relate a lot of stuff. Um, I, don't, I mean, John's been a great inspiration to me. I, I, he's influenced a lot of my recent work. And uh, that's, in fact, I'm taking the history of The Hobbit on the road with me <laughs> just to oh, make nice. sure I, I have it. So, that's, uh, nice. um, I mean, yeah, John is a great source of information for story internal stuff in The Hobbit. Uh, although I would say that The Annotated Hobbit is probably the ultimate story internal commentary because he ties the all, Doug, Doug Anderson just like tells you, well, 
in version two, you know, on page 26, uh, this looks this way. You know, right, it's basically right. still story internal. It's just how the story changes from edition to edition, uh, and, and, as well as all the external stuff that he brings in, too. Yeah, no, that, that would definitely be a good example. Now, is there a, an annotated Lord of the Rings, the way they did with the annotated Hobbit? Well, I mean, I guess... Or is it pretty much the other... The, um, the Hammond and Skull books, uh, the companion the, and the guide. Hammond and Skull, yeah. Right. Those, uh, uh, nice thing about the bookshelf right here. Right, the reader's guide and uh, the companion. So, right. I think and the those, chronology as well. <laughs> those are the definitive um, Lord of the Rings annotated guides. Okay. All right, cool. Let's see. Um, anybody, in, uh, other folks seem to be getting great discussion here from Artemir, and other guys are being kind of quiet in the chat room. I know a few are tuned in. Uh, Artemir says he thinks John Ralph is quite exceptional and that he's very good at talking criticism, but he also knows a lot about story and trouble stuff. And, and yeah, I think we're pretty much in, in agreement there. Right, Michael? Yeah, Michael's shaking his head, which doesn't work on audio, but for those who can see the video. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Remember, I have this to audio for those who prefer podcasts. <laughs> Quit mocking my mic. Mike Mockery. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Michael's Mike Mockery. <laughs> Michael's Mike Mockery of, Mike, of Hawk's Mike. <laughs> Lots of alliteration there. <laughs> well, that's what some people tune in for, the, the silliness. <laughs> I, I'm sure. Oh, they made that clear in, in postings. Oh, that reminds me, I need to go pull up um, one or two forum postings. I have to remember which site. Problem with being on so many. A little hard to keep track sometimes, but there were a couple of questions somebody wanted us to discuss on an upcoming show. Where? Oh, and so last, last uh, week, the... Uh, Inland Empire Token Society, we broadcast our meeting live uh, with Brian and Chris and a few people online as well. And that actually went pretty well. We had a pretty good interaction from the online folks in addition to our local monthly group. Oh, that's good. I just I just I brought my laptop and just set it there on the table in the coffee shop. And even though there was some coffee noise in the background, people were able to hear well enough. And we just, we just kind of talk to each other, but they were, it was almost like they were part of the conversation, and it went pretty smoothly, so that, that was nice. Um, I missed that, unfortunately. I've been very sick. It is, I understand. It is available for download um, on the the uh, Tolkien Moot, so youtube.com Tolkien Moot, or of course on TolkienScholars.org. That, that's downloadable, and I'll be exporting just the audio eventually as well. But it was, it was a good conversation, and I was going to bring some notes from that conversation, and I didn't have time because we were camping. As I said, I, I got back from camping just 30 minutes before I went on the air. <laughs> so we had a good time. That's good, because a bad time would be not good. Indeed. Um, boy, where did somebody... Somebody wanted some, some questions. I guess I'll have to save that for the next show, maybe, if I don't have it. Uh, anything else you wanted to bring up, Michael? Well, let's officially acknowledge that there will be... Well, I think we already have three, three Hobbit movies. Oh, yeah, we did that. yeah, we did that last show mm -hmm. three weeks ago. Yeah. See, we there's no do. news, man. There's no well, news. We, we, we've covered some good stuff here. Artemir also says um, there was an annotated Lorings project at TORC, if I remember correctly, question mark. But Lord of the Rings Reader's Companion is the only printed such that I know, though I don't know if they're exactly the same thing. That was his commentary. Not ringing a bell, sorry. Right. Yeah, I don't know either. Okay, well, we've, we've covered a little bit. I knew it would be a little bit shorter show today because I know you've got to get on the road and, and I'm in between trips of the well, kids before on the school road starts quite up. Yet, but oh, but, but you're not going to be here next week, right? No, not not next week. When will you be available for another show? Maybe in about two weeks. 
but okay. I have no idea what the backdrop backdrop will look like. <laughs> okay. Probably look like a hotel room or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to post in the chat rooms for any last questions before we finish the show. Oh, did you see where uh, Benedict Cumberbatch gave a, a hint about where the first movie might end? No. You so, have a link for that? Uh, no, I should have. I should have thought to look it up. I might. Okay. If you can send that to me later, I can upload it with okay. the video later. So he did an interview before Peter came out with the announcement about three movies. And in the interview, okay. he, goes, he he thinks that the sec the first movie ends with Smog's eye opening. Oh, the first Which is one. not in the book, okay? <laughs> so before people hit the hobbit to look for where the dragon's eye open, open there's nothing like that in the book. Uh, so, you know, no. they could they could stop at Burns' house, you know, and then the dragon's I mean, yeah, eye could open. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of, so it's kind of a non-spoiler, you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> We don't even know we're going to get to see Bard the Bowman. You know? What's that? We don't know if we're going to get to see Bard the Bowman in the first movie or, or Tario, the, the new elf girl. But everybody is waiting and speculating. <laughs> um, Hallian's asking if we can cover Return of the Ring next time. So that's the convention. Well, Hallian, we'd love to hear from you about that. Um, if you want to post something right now or post an essay that we can we can read over because we weren't there and you were. Yeah, so I, I you can make stuff up better. if you want to. <laughs> I, I can talk about my panel at the Return of the Ring. <laughs> you know, I had to turn down. I was supposed I was invited to be a panelist for four panels over here at Spokon for Tolkien and for world building, and I had to turn it down because they told me at the last minute I'd already scheduled something, but hopefully get to do it next year. So the first time anybody's asked me to do any panel stuff, and that's non non technology related. You want to yeah, hear something sad? What? I'm going to be in Atlanta, the Atlanta area, in September. After Dragon, after, after Dragon Con. Oh, <laughs> oh, so close. Just Chris Ray will probably be there. He goes there all the time. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I've been, I've been getting a lot there. of yeah, I've been getting a lot of. Uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, email stuff from the people on the Tolkien track of that. Um, so, Hallie and yeah, we would we would love to uh, discuss Return of the Ring, but you would be the best person if you could either join us in the Google Plus chat room and you could discuss it in the show, or if you're not comfortable with that, as I said, you know, post things here yeah, in the chat I'll room and give us an essay. Why don't you? Formally invite Hallian to be your co-host next weekend. Uh, Hallian, would you be interested, or Artemir, either of them? Would you like to be a co-host next week since Michael won't be available? What, what I was thinking, if I can't, if, if they're not interested, I'll see if uh, Brian is available, the, the Tolkien Society fellow. We'll see if he's available too. So he, he's always got some great discussions. Yeah, you might as well keep, strong, keep, the, keep the momentum going here. I would like to. I would definitely like to. <laughs> Uh, Hallian says to check out the Parmar Kenta piece. I think, oh yeah, that's the review of it, which I think I sent you the link. Let's see, I'm not sure I did. Yes, I did. Uh, okay. Parm Parmar Kenta .blogspot .fi. It's in it to you at 1238. So Fans and scholars, oh my. And so is so, this Hallian's website? Whose website is this? Is this Hallian's website? I don't. I don't think this is Hellions. I think this is. Um, let me just scroll back to what he told me about that. It was somebody else's. Troll. Oh, um, this is Troll's phone. Right. Troll's. Oh, he Troll's said he knew phone. you. Yeah, he said you might know him. Yeah, I, I know who he is. He's a he's a longtime survivor of the Tolkien fan wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Huh? <laughs> there have been times when he and I have not. Uh, he was. He was not. We were not always on the outs, but there were a couple of times where I think. Uh, I'll say he probably got a little more frustrated. <laughs> He's actually a good-hearted guy, from, from what I can see. Oh, good. So. Okay, well, so he has a little bit um, about it, but we haven't had a chance to prepare to be something to read and maybe comment on next time. Uh, 
Who were the top ten Tolkien scholars? Oh, good gravy. <laughs> there's there's a mountain everybody wants to claw their way to the top of. <laughs> Fun. Uh, Artemis says that there were some Americans at the Return of the Ring convention, too. So um, that's nice. Did they behave? <laughs> <laughs> We have such a bad reputation overseas. Oh, uh, unfortunately. I, I have a, uh, there was an old friend of mine, he was, he was a client, but he kind of became a friend um, in, for, for technology, and he's uh, Swiss German. And initially, and back in the 50s, he competed in the Swiss Olympics as a skier, and then he wanted to figure out a way to continue to ski without being a ski bum, and he went into Alpine Resort Engineering Design and continues to do that all these decades later. So I had hosted, I helped him set up a website with uh, maps and posters and catalogs as well as his service cause it, it, that he provided for skiers. Well, it's a lot of them were in Utah, Snowbird, Alta, Brighton, Park City, etc. But also other places in uh, uh, Europe and China. He's had some recent projects in China and then he was trying to get me to go move to Argentina to set up a big project up there at one point, but it would have been a five-year commitment, and the kids were still young then. Um, but yeah, uh, you had to deny them the opportunity to learn about another culture. It, it, there, there were too many things going on at the time for that to be a viable option. Unfortunately, oh, okay, uh, would have been would have been great, but circumstances weren't in line. Okay. The stars did not align. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Paul, you hangnail that week. Ooh. No, I'm not going to go into this, but uh, one of the things he commented about was how prior to, I don't know, not really 9-11, but, but somewhere a few years after 9-11, uh, prior to that time period, he used to go and talk about how he lived in America and, and people would ask him lots of questions and be very positive. But after that time period, he had to and also they would comment because they noticed his accent had changed enough, it had been slightly Americanized. And he, he started to notice that that started to have a really negative impact, especially in Europe, when they would figure out that he, had, he, he would try to hide the fact that he had moved to the States because of all the negativity he was uh, getting because of America was, was being viewed very negatively at the time. And uh, I don't know if that's still the case now. No, I, I think when you see your armies marching all over the world that people right. are... And he's imperialistic the view, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he 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 found that to be a challenge, but wait, but he found in Asia that it was kind of the opposite that it, it worked to his advantage, and so it was interesting. Same thing in South America. It's just Europe that seemed to have the negative view. So it's that's, interesting. That's because yeah. we're getting away with sending our armies marching all over the world in an age where they're not allowed to. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. not because that's not true. We're not getting away with it. People are, are kind of sick. You know, it's like Yanks go home, and, right? And we right. would love to go home. We're just if we don't do the job right, we're going to be back. Yeah, the fellow who just moved in next door to me is a, a Afghanistan vet of a few years. He's a in his late twenties, maybe very early thirties, and he just returned from several years touring. I bet he could share some frustrations with you. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, it was clearly hard on him. So um, he's done a beautiful job with his yard. <laughs> he took over the house from an old neighbor who was in his nineties, who was still jogging up until he was about eighty-nine. We just see him out there each morning jogging. He was a, he's, I think I've told you about him before. He was originally a, uh, let's see, he, he, he did a paper route when he was about 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. And then he went into boxing. And then he became a, C, uh, let's see, he got a car dealership and then became a CPA. <laughs> you wouldn't think there'd be a whole lot of ex boxer CPAs in the world. <laughs> I guess he can beat down the numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then he recently, just just last year, started to have, you know, started to fall and, and, and have lapses of memory, and so he's moved to a retirement community, and so those new new people moved in. But anywho, uh, it looks like there's no other questions from the rest of the group. I think we've we've made a show of it, and and hopefully people enjoy. Please, if you have any questions. <clears throat> Artemis says he has to go now, but great discussion. Halloween had to go. 
So if you have any other questions, please let us know in the chat rooms or um, uh, you can let us know by internet at TolkienScholars at gmail.com or swing by TolkienScholars.org or MiddleEarthTalk.com. Either one will work fine. And the YouTube channel is YouTube.com forward slash MiddleEarthRadio. We'd love to hear questions you'd like to, and topics discussed in the next show. If you don't want us to share your handle, then let us know. Otherwise, we're happy to share it and involve everybody in the community. Let your friends and family know about the show. And uh, Michael, thank you again for making it here. I look forward to when you're back on the air. Cool. Don't forget the disclaimer. <laughs> Uh, Middle Earth Talk is not endorsed or supported or authorized by any of the Tolkien copyright holders. That includes, but is not limited to, Tolkien Estate, a.k.a. now Middle Earth, er, sorry, Tolkien Estate, or Tolkien Enterprises, a.k.a. now Middle Earth Enterprises, New Line Cinema, or any of the other vast array of Tolkien intellectual property license holders. And Michael, thank you again, and the rest of you out there, wherever you may be, be well, Namarie. So long. Farewell. Sir now. I'll even say adieu. You, you stole my thunder. To you, to you, to you. Goodbye. <laughs> Ciao. And then you brought Man.